welcome to the Pelican Sports Spring Post Game Show. I'm Tommy Chrysan, joined by Charles Barbary. Charles, how are you doing? I'm doing good, buddy. Well, thanks well, for having you, me. Again. Well, you, you know, we a couple of appearances this spring. You know, we, we don't want you people to think you're not doing anything anymore worried. after the long run of Sports Talk TV. But we're here to talk about LSU baseball and a few other things. Tigers trying to wrap up Game Three right now with we as we speak with South Carolina. They lose game one, they win game two, and that SEC race is tightening up, Charles. Yeah, no question. Mississippi State right now is the uh, toast of the West. Uh, they're going to come out of this weekend with at least a one-game lead. Whether LSU is going to be one or two back is going to depend on the outcome of this ball game. And then uh, you've got Auburn and uh, uh, who's the other one that's tied with them besides Auburn? Um, Arkansas. Arkansas. So, Arkansas. Yeah, so it's going to be pretty uh, close up there. Uh, in the SEC. It's the month of May. We, we've heard for a long time in these parts of town, Charles, that you play your best baseball in May and hopefully in June when you get to Omaha. Hopefully but, you get there. Yeah, but, but right now May is what's important. A lot of scoreboard watching going on in the Southeastern Conference and the Tigers are, are battling as hard as they can. Yeah, they are and it's, it's, it's been a tough series without a doubt. I mean, this this has uh, been like pulling teeth. I mean, it was at the, fr the first two games on Friday and Saturday night and uh, was able to do that and uh, watch the game. The, the heartbreaker for LSU on Saturday night, a heartbreaker for South Carolina, excuse me, on Friday night, and a heart heartbreaker for South Carolina on Saturday night. And uh, the two evenly matched ball clubs, they both have similar strengths, similar weaknesses. And right now, uh, uh, it's a close ball game to find who's going to win the series, and it's going to be big. The win for South Carolina puts them at 500 in the conference, and the win for LSU keeps them in the race for the uh, Western Division. Well, and here's the other thing, too. I think people were a little misled with South Carolina's conference record. Preseason, these guys, like LSU, were projected to be a top-five team. Right. Now, their ace, Clark Schmidt, been out for a couple of weeks, out for the year to the old Tommy Down surgery, so their Saturday guy had to throw Friday, mm -hmm. Sunday guy Saturday, and they making it work today. So, But that doesn't mean they're not a good ball club, and, and they're in the middle to pack in the Eastern Division, which now Florida leads over Kentucky because yeah, Florida swept Ole Miss as we speak this weekend. So and Kentucky you know, lost two out of three at home to of all teams, Georgia. Yeah, and, and Kentucky had been so good at home all year long, right. it just didn't work for them. So anyway, uh, it, the the West is uh, certainly uh, jammed up. And LSU's, uh, it, it's one of those every pitch things, almost like a regional atmosphere. And the weather's just been perfect all weekend long. Well, it is. It's been a beautiful uh, weekend for baseball and, and everything. But LSU in this game right now, th 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 this, this team is, is underachieving from the expectations of the beginning of the season, without a doubt. And it's like pulling teeth. It, it, it's not, even when they win the game like on Saturday, it's not that they did it with great magnificence. Uh, it was a game that they had to come out with a two-out base hit in the, in the uh, sixth inning. Uh, the, it's, this team has been so inconsistent, up, especially up and down the batting order. Their relief pitching has been inconsistent. Sometimes it's brilliant. Sometimes can't, uh, they can't uh, throw the ball over the plate. Uh, same with the hitters. Sometimes they can uh, really line up really look sharp. And let me ask you this, Tommy. How many times do you see this late in the season that you're still fooling with your batting order? Yeah, you shouldn't be fooling with it in May. Coach Moneri is notorious for doing it in, in March and parts of April. Right. Get to May, you, you, you should be more set than they are. And, and that reflects back on the word you use, the inconsistency, which a lot of people have tagged that label on this team. It's and true. it's accurate. And now, let me ask you this question, Charles. Preseason, LSU was two or three, and it's like Whatever. It, there's there's the only thing that they have more of than college baseball polls is <laughs> mock NFL drafts. <laughs> there were like 97 million of those, and none of them were right. But do you, would you prefer the Ty, uh, the Tigers or any team be ranked in that top five preseason, oh, no. No, no, no. or you, would you rather be sitting at eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then play your you way like up? Because if you're sitting at two, three, all you can do is play your way down. I was gonna say you like you like to be in good position coming down the home stretch, right in the back of that that, that field, but uh, you want to be in position to do it. Uh, you know, be tenth, twelfth, twelfth going into this weekend, or most of the polls, I think. Yeah. So, so I mean, that that's not a bad position, but when you're uh, you start, you have to start making your move, and you're gonna have to start doing things. It's still possible. I mean, unless you can, if they win this ball game, and uh, then they got two out of three of the next two weekends against Auburn, and Mississippi State. Well, and the other thing, the two things that we hear all the time, they fit. I mean, it's baseball that I think have affected this team a lot is a men left on base, no question. B 
the timely hitting. Men on second and third, less than two outs, and you don't get them in. You can overcome that a little bit. But I think it's happened a little too much for Paul Maneri's liking with this team. Oh, there's no question. That's the biggest weakness on this team is they can't hit with men in scoring position. Uh, I'll give you a good example. I happened to be watching our Houston Astros the other day. There you go. And they had this guy named uh, Bregman. Alex Bregman. Who's only hitting about 250 at the time. But his, but his batting average with men in scoring position was 469. So when you can hit with men in scoring position, it really doesn't matter, you know, overall what your batting average is. Right now, you might have a 330 batting average at LSU right now, but I'd like to know what it is with men in scoring position. I prob probably not over 200. Yeah, you know, it's it's you, you, baseball is driven by statistics, and you bring up good ones right there. And, and the guys in the game, if you're you, you're the manager of the Astros or you're one of the bench coaches, you know those stats, and that's right. why they keep running that guy out there. Okay, right. you know, and I, I always made the equivalent the uh, analogy. I remember when I was playing high school baseball, we'd have guys on, you know, Wednesday, they would go, you know, five for eight in a doubleheader against Illinois State, who hadn't seen the sunshine yet. Right. Then we would go play UNO at Tulane, and they go, you know, 0 for 8. And then, so they'd be 5 for 16, batting 308 on the year, and everybody's going, guys hitting 300. Yeah, well, he got yeah, all his hits against exactly. the team that never saw the blue sky yet this year. And when we played a good team, he couldn't get on base. No. So you have to chop stats up. Baseball people do that. That's a good point you make. Well, and Skip, is always, uh, Skip Berkman's always said, is the timely hitting is the key to the game. It's the key to winning. Uh, you have to be able to be able to do that. And right now, this team can't. Now, that goes back to why can't this team get like that? And right now, I think the, the, everybody in town that I talk to is, is, is uh, pointing the finger at uh, Micah Gibbs as the hitting coach. And you wonder why in the heck somebody like that is basically still has training wheels on, is getting a job as a hitting coach at a place like LSU. I understand it was late, but you still have to wonder about it. Uh, when, they, when, he, when Ken Azaro left, and it, I would have thought that he could have found somebody else, but right well, now Gibbs is it. In my opinion, Gibbs ain't getting a job done. Yeah. Now... I don't know that he could have got somebody else. I mean, it was early November, okay? Most coaches who yeah. are about to coach the spring season have a job and not interested and in moving. Done, they're doing and then, you know, you, whatever it was, the timing is what it is. Canizero leaves. So I don't know if Paul Maneri, you know, cranked up the phone and tried to look for somebody or tried to talk to somebody else. Or he said, hey, we're going to have to go from within uh, recruiting. Right. Signing starts in three, four, five days. And, you know, maybe we got to do this. And I think the telltale would be what happens shortly sure. after the conclusion of the season, whenever that may be. I would agree. Then if all of a sudden, you know, Mary's hired a new guy, then we'll know maybe he did wish to do that in November, but couldn't. Yeah, and I, and I suspect that's going to happen. If it doesn't, I'll be very surprised and, uh, and uh, go along those lines. But uh, I, I think um, Gibbs is, is, uh, is a good, great guy. He's an LSU guy and all that stuff. But right now, he still has his training wheels on trying to, uh, trying to be a hitting coach. And... Uh, I think that you're going to see at the end of the season, he's either going to go someplace else to be a hitting coach or he's going to go back to have an administrative job at LSU. Yeah, so uh, that will remain to be seen. A couple other things before we go to break. Charles, you hadn't been here since the gymnastics team uh, this spring finished as the national runner-up for the second year in a row for the second time to Oklahoma. Oklahoma. But I know there was a huge banquet last week in Donaldsonville honoring Dee Dee Bro, her hometown down there. And it was a big turnout and all that. And uh, my in what I have learned about gymnastics this is not going to be a reload for next year. This is another talented team that's expected to compete for the national title again next year. But what a two-year run by D.D. Bro yeah, in gymnastics. The thing, you know, it kind of reminds me back in the late 90s, uh, Sue Gunner was a ba uh, women's basketball coach, and she was always trying to fill the stands up, try to get uh, fannies in the seats, and doing all kinds of different promotions and everything else. And finally, for a couple of ball games, when Tennessee was number one in the country and on their big run, came into town, they filled the, the PMAC up with like 13,000 people for some women's basketball. And I remember the gleam in uh, Sue's eye when that occurred. And you see the same thing happened. It took, it, it's taken Dee Dee, about 36. We'll go, can we say decades? Yes, <laughs> a, a long time. But she, but it has arrived. It, gymnastics is now in sport, especially it gives the young girls in town, the young the young female students, ju junior high, high school girls, 
an athletic event that they can identify with and go with. And you'll see a lot of young girls at the gym meets and everything else. But now, this past year, they averaged over 10,000 in attendance. That's not tickets sold like in baseball. It's people actually in the seats. So one, my favorite question to most people at LSU, what's the second most averaged attendance sport in L in Tiger in Tiger Town is gymnastics. Well, you know, I, Charles, I, like you, I've been in the sports media in this town for many decades. Now you a little bit longer, but uh, I think it's one of the more intriguing, cool stories. This rise of gymnastics, because I can tell you right now, 15, 10 years ago, oh, we five? weren't talking gymnastics on a spring post game show here on the Pelican. None of the local radio guys, and in your days of radio, you didn't mention gymnastics right. at all. So, you know, but uh, but but with what DD Bro has done, with what this program has done, now they're getting some attention. And it's as well you deserved. Said, the people are showing up. And yeah, it is absolutely well deserved. You get back to back national runner ups in any sport. You need to be front and center, and gymnastics has done that. See, uh, we we talk all the spring sports here, Charles. That's what oh, we talk. Oh, so we're talking do. beach volleyball too. Well, they got eliminated by Hawaii. Hawaii that's right. See, people didn't. You didn't think I knew that? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I know nothing else. But I read the headline. Okay. <laughs> hey, we got uh, the spring sports post game show here on Pelican Sports TV and WUBR. 9, 10 a.m. CBS Sports Radio. If you want to give us a call, 225-928-4910 or send a text message to area code 504-689-9246. We'd be happy to hear from you here on the uh, TV or the radio. We appreciate you checking it out as we're on this uh, Sunday as LSU and South Carolina are wrapping up that three-game set. Uh, next weekend, the series is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This program will be on the air Saturday at approximately 3 o'clock, 3.15, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. We'll take our first break of the night. We'll come back with more on the Pelican Sports Spring Post Game Show with Charles Barbary. I'm Tommy Chrysan, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, New Orleans, on the Internet at PelicanSportsTV.com, Cox Cable, AT&T U-verse, and WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. Stay with us. Accord Eye Clinic Vision Source is located on Perkins Road in Baton Rouge, offering full-service optical and lab work. Dr. Shonda Accord and the professionally trained staff pride themselves on service, complete eye exams, help with contact lenses, and selection of frames featuring Silhouette, Gucci, Jimmy Choo, and all the top lines. State-of-the-art equipment including OptiMap, which digitally photographs your retina. Call Acord Eye Clinic for an appointment, 225-767-3937. That's 225-767-3937. Visit the website, visionsource-br.com. All patients of all ages are welcome. Acord Eye Clinic, Vision Source. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. 
Cypress Lake Apartments are conveniently located off Segan Lane in Baton Rouge. Come see this community, which has many amenities including swimming pools, fitness room, playground, and much more. Beautiful views of Cypress Lake. One, two, three bedroom apartments are available. Stop by and see Cypress Lake Apartments. Give them a call at 225-293-6789 or visit online cypresslake-apartments.net. If you've been injured in an accident and you won your case, we can get you your cash fast. I called Penn Funding and had my money fast. If you're a victim of an accident, bad drug case, or any other legal settlement, but Penn Funding can get you paid in one lump sum. Instead of my small monthly payments, Penn Funding got me my money when I needed it the most. Turn your small monthly settlement payments into one large cash payoff right now. If your case is settled, you qualify. And no one can get your money faster than Penn Funding. There's no risk, obligation, or out-of-pocket cost when you make this life-changing call. I called, answered the questions, and received my cash payoff quickly. Need cash for your children? To fix your car, pay the bills. If your case is settled and you're a victim of an accident, bad drug case, or any other legal settlement, it's your money. Call Penn Funding now. Call 800-825-1325-800-825-1325. We continue with Pelican Sports Spring Post Game Show. I'm Tommy Chrysan as LSU and South Carolina are battling it out. We should have something for you on that shortly. Uh, we remind you, you're on Pelican Sports TV, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, New Orleans, and on the internet at pelicansportstv.com, as well as on the radio, WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, 9, 10 a.m. on your dial. If you don't have our new app yet, you need to go get it. The, it is free. Go to your app store or to Google Play, and you'll have the free app, WUBR AM 910. You'll see the CBS Sports Radio logo. Check us out. We're not leaving. Tune in. We want you to take us wherever you're going. Also want to remind you about Tremonti's Meat and Seafood. Mike Tremonti and the staff do a super job. Every Tuesday, there's a boiled crawfish special. Lunch every day. You can get crawfish every day <laughs> except Sunday. Uh, you got the Chairman's Reserve Beef. Uh, you can buy the crawfish live. You can buy them already boiled. The website has all the information, Tremonti's.com. Phone number 225-751-7665. Mike and the staff fed the Tigers Roar crew last week, and I can tell you there was nothing left. We had boudin balls and boudin wraps and fried catfish and all the sauces to dip. Go see them. Crawfish galore. Mother's Day coming up. Lots of crawfish bowls. Get your crawfish at Tremontes.com on Jefferson Highway, right down the street from Parkview Baptist School and Church. Go see Mike. Tell him you heard about it on the Pelican Sports Spring Post Game Show. Charles, the Tigers are trying to make some noise. They're trying to. Uh, bottom of the ninth, trailing by a run, first and third with nobody out, and uh, uh, Dykeman at the plate. So we'll see how. Well, that we got out. our guys on the staff here monitoring things. Uh, I got to give I got to give a little plug to Tremonti. So I had my siblings in from out of town a couple of weeks ago, and we had we wanted some crawfish. So we went over there, to called the day ahead of time, and ordered uh, 20 pounds of uh, boiled crawfish. And they had it. It was sesame. It was very good, huh? There you go. Two hey, thumbs up. They man. do a good job. Two Tuesday, thumbs up. Right now on Tuesdays, they got a special uh, 10 pounds for like twenty four ninety nine. You can eat it there. You can take it home. Uh, whatever yeah. fits better. But Mike and the staff do a great job. Charles, you would have liked to be in here last Wednesday night for yeah, Tigers Roy. We had a big old platter. <laughs> And uh, uh, you'd had to be quick, though, because it went, okay? Mar Marty beat you to it. Marty had a little bit. Holberg, you don't see that guy. You know? <laughs> well, he's from New Orleans. What do you expect? You know, All right. Tigers, tied Tigers have tied at 6-6 six, six in the right. bottom of nine. Nobody out. They're still batting, still rocking, still rolling. And, and if they can push another guy across yeah. the plate, they could win the game and the series and stay, as you said, one game out of first with six league games to go. You do have a couple of non-conference games. you got South Alabama mm -hmm. next Tuesday night, which would be the 9th, and then the following Tuesday on the 16th, the Northwestern State Demons come in. Yeah. Uh, I'll ask you, uh, you know this season, the, uh, baseball is so fickle, and the game, is, the difference between winning and losing is so close on different things. LSU has won two conference games this year because with two out in the ninth inning trailing, the other team made an error that allowed the game to go on and LSU to tie or win the ball game. 
the, uh, this one, uh, South Carolina, LSU got a break in the eighth inning. Uh, when uh, they made a throw uh, with uh, two out, men on first and third, uh, they uh, th threw the ball across and the umpire called the batter uh, runner safe because he said the first baseman pulled his foot off the bag and it sure didn't look like he did. It was close, but it didn't look like he did. So the Tigers caught a break there and if they didn't catch that break, who knows what happens. And this is a, that brings up a question, Charles. Instant replay review. Yeah. If you're going to have instant replay review, use it. That, that was not a reviewable call according to the review rules. But, you know, where do you draw the line? I realize, you know, you can't review every pitch and uh, every single... You Major know. League Baseball belongs to the umpires in the last two innings. What's wrong with that? That's that. In college baseball, it should belong to the umpires. Uh, uh, no problem with that. Any, any close play uh, like that should be able to be reviewed. Now, uh, but see, I w they reviewed the play at the plate earlier in the game yeah. when Duplantis comes sliding in on the fly ball to right. You had a great throw but from the right fielder, and a sweep tag didn't make contact with Luke, Luke Plyers. Yeah. He reached around. He yeah. tried to touch the plate. He didn't touch it the didn't, plate. It didn't look like it. And they um, called him out. Well, Coach Maneri wanted to review, thinking maybe that finger touched the plate and had it, and it could have been. But, and they reviewed that. Well, why can't they review the one? Yeah, I was going to say, you can review balls catch or not catch. You can re review balls whether it's a home run or not. Uh, you can rule foul. You can uh, rule foul affair. Not on a bouncing ball. Uh, no, line line drive. Line, yeah, and everything. And then you can uh, uh, review plays at the plate uh, on tag plays. Uh, so why can't you do a play at first base to see what the guys uh, pull well, his foot I mean, off the base? Yeah, or not? I mean, I think if you're South Carolina, you want that reviewed because you they don't they think they got jobbed on it. They thought the guy was out. Their first base coach got ejected because he decided to voice yeah. his opinion about it, but, um, you know, and again, where do you draw the line? Where do you, what do you not review? You yeah, know? There's, there's been an in-game situation. I mean, it's, it's uh, in the eighth inning. Okay, time, but if that's in the first inning, you don't review it? Probably not. Okay. Probably not. Uh, uh, but in the last two innings, I think that's very reviewable. Well, well, I mean, I guess you could say last two innings, we're going to review everything that's in question. Why not? And like you said, let the umpires choose to do it, not the coach. That doesn't mean Coach Maneri can't, can't come out, out there and say, hey, hey, Mr. Rump, would you review this? And he goes, yeah, let me go review it. Yeah. So you're really kind of letting the coaches do it. But well, the, the ump could say, not reviewing it. I'm 100% certain of my call. We're not reviewing right. it. I always, I always go back. Before Major League Baseball had the review system they have now, was it about four years ago where the guy had the – Perfect yeah. game going in two outs in the ninth inning, and the umpire blew the call. Armando Galarraga was pitching, and Jim Joyce was the ump that kicked the call. As and he, he blew, said. and he blew. And he admitted it after yeah, the game. Yeah, he did. When he he saw went over replay, and He said, "I missed it." He went over and apologized to him. But uh, you know, it's a shame that those kind of stuff couldn't be. Uh, yeah. So now he's not in the record books with a perfect game, right. and Johan Santana's in the record books with a no hitter when Beltran hit a ball down the third base line. Mm -hmm. It was fair, but that much, and they called it foul in the ninth inning. And he's credited with a no-hitter when everybody knows Beltron got a clean hit down the line. Uh, you know, had there been reviewed, that's a, that's a double or base hit, whatever it was. Let's get back to LSU a minute. All right. I hadn't been here to talk to you about it during the course of the season. I'm, I said earlier in the year this has been a frustrating season for what the expectations were. You talking about the whole school year no, or you talking no, about talk, baseball? baseball okay. Talk about baseball. Talking about the baseball team right now. It was preseason number five, uh, top five team. Uh, and... Uh, and right now they're right sitting at about three games. What's the record at the, in, in SEC play? They're 14 and nine going into today's game. Uh, so uh, uh, that, that's, that's, that's good, but it's not great. It generally takes 20 wins roughly to win the SEC, uh, to win the divisional title, if not the full t uh, conference the title. The overall title. So, so is this, so what do we think of this year? What do we think of the job Maneri is doing and the team is doing? I think, you know, they're not living up to preseason expectations, number one. We were discussing a little bit before getting on the air, the inconsistency. That's the word. You know, sometimes no you get to May and you can label a team with a word or a couple of words. Mm -hmm. Inconsistent, I think, is this team's word. Other than the defense, they lead a conference in defense. They've played solid defense all year long. Well, I mean, they're course. catching the ball, they're throwing it, you know, they're not making many errors. Uh, but I think the inconsistency is the situation that has cost this team and then you know they've lost more midweek games probably than normal as well yeah and i mean they went for a, a couple of years ago they went like two or three years where they didn't lose a midweek game uh, to an in-state school they had like a 25 game winning streak against them or whatever the um uh, but this team has been so inconsistent and they shouldn't be i mean this team is uh 
Six, six, uh, going to 10. Uh, okay, so we just got the word we're going into extra innings. Uh, you know, good example. They get the tying run in, got uh, two runners on with nobody out, and they can't get the next run home. Come on. You're going down to the bottom of your lineup at that point. The simple fact is this team is so inconsistent on the way they do. A good, uh, I'll pick on Bo Jordan right now. Had two hits today that I know of and uh, that uh, did well, but they weren't in key situations. Uh, you get an opportunity. He had to uh, know his slot would have come up in that situation in the ninth. I don't know exactly what he did, but the fact is he didn't get a run home. So it's not, and I don't mean just to pick on Bo, but it's been throughout the lineup like that. That's just an example. But, you know, I don't think you're picking on him. I think you're examining the baseball numbers, and then you're making a conclusion based on the numbers. Mm -hmm. That is a, a, something that, you know, I, I go back, Jim Rice. You, you know, you remember Jim Rice of the Boston Red Sox? Yeah. One year he hit 36 home runs, and 32 of them came when they were either up by five or down by five. So the point was, okay, you're knocking the ball out of the park, right? But not when it matters. Exactly. You know, it goes back to some of the things we were talking about earlier. So, and believe me, Coach Maneri, he's got all those stats in front of him every Monday morning when the team's off, and he's he knows who's doing what from the seventh in and on, right. and who's hitting what guys in scoring position, and what's the score, and I mean that 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 you know, especially when you're this far into the schedule, you can make conclusions then, you know. Two weeks into the schedule, okay, we got more. We got more info. We got more data. Okay, so what do we expect this team to do the rest of the season? Well, they're inconsistent. So I don't expect them to be in Omaha. I think if they end up in Omaha, let's back it up. That's I, a big surprise I, at this point. Here we oh, sit I, here in the early oh, part agree. of May. But but you got two weeks after the after this game is decided uh, this afternoon. You got two games, two weekends left. One at home against Auburn, which is uh, tied with you going into this uh, today, and you have Mississippi State, which is a game ahead of you at at State. So you got six games remaining. So unless you win four, do they win three? Do they win six? What do they do? Good point. And both of those are Thursday, Friday, Saturday series, as Charles mentioned. The ones with Auburn are in Baton Rouge. The ones in Mississippi State are in Starkville. Have you ever been to Starkville? I have. I have been to Starkville, but not to a baseball game. Have you been what, for football? We've been to football, okay. football a couple of times. All right. Well, I, didn't, I mean, it's not the most happening in town. No. Not that you're the party animal or no, anything, because you're not. But I just, you know. No, it's uh, it's uh, a little different. You know, Stark Vegas. But <laughs> but uh, but uh, LSU. I'm looking. I mean, you would hope to win two out of three against Auburn next week, and you'd probably figure to lose two out of three against. Uh, Mississippi State. So let's say they get fortunate enough to win today's game. So you're looking at uh, three of those four wins that put you at 18 wins in the conference. It's not bad, but it's not championship style either. And once again on Friday night, the Tigers lost 3-2, to two, a nice outing by Alex Lang, but didn't get the hitting. Well, let's talk about Alex Lang for a minute. There you go. Everybody talks about what a fantastic pitcher is and what he's been doing and everything else. And I think Friday's game is a a very good microcosm of what he's been doing all year. He pitched eight great innings, but he had one inning that wasn't, and it cost him the ball game. Lang, if you look at his, you look at him, he, is, he doesn't get a lot of run support. LSU hasn't hit top-notch pitching well, in the Southeast. Well, they're going against the other teams. We have, LSU, yeah. go back to our inconsistent hitting again. But the simple fact is, Lang has not won these close, tight ball games. He loses them. He has there's some place in the ball game that they get to him. There's a breakdown. Yeah. There's, there's somewhere that they get to him. And also, when you look earlier in the season, too, he wasn't, uh, he, was it the Texas TCU game? It was TCU or Texas? He played TCU, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, didn't do well at all. Uh, so against a top-notch team, he didn't throw well. Uh, so I'm not, I think he's overrated, to be frank about it. That's just the way I'll say it. Uh, well, he has regressed. Oh, no question. All-American freshman year. Yeah. Eight and four last year. I think he was, he's five and five or five and six now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, and here's what surprises me about Alex Lang. And I've said this on the radio. I'm surprised that in the three years he, he hasn't developed a third pitch. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe Alan Dunn has worked his tail off trying to get a third pitch, and they don't have anything they're confident enough throwing a game. A, you cannot throw in a professional level with only two pitches, even in minor leagues. It's not going to work. And B, it's not working for him now because if you wear a Southeastern Conference uniform, you're a good baseball player, you're a good hitter, and he, you know, he's got his issues because they will not swing at the curve until he throws it over the plate. And if he puts a fastball in there, you his know, fastball has no movement. His fastball, 90% of these guys can turn that around. His fastball has no movement. He has to be precise on the corners, and he hasn't been. Uh, his curveball is uh, as effective as a two-strike out pitch, but as far as uh, not being an out pitch, 
uh, they let it go and goes in the dirt for a ball. Uh, he, he's been compared to, uh, I mean, I heard Alan Dunn on um, uh, Buddy uh, Sanji show uh, earlier this week and uh, ranting and raving about how great he was and how well he was doing. I understand that he's shown things like the eight innings that he was magnificent Friday night. He was magnificent those eight, but he had the breakdown to one inning. Uh, I, I, I think he's overrated. I really do. I'll, I'll be very interested to see how, how where he is drafted and how high he is drafted. Well, he's forecast number one first round, not number one, but first round pick. I don't think that happens. I was going to say, I, right now, I would look at him in the bottom half of the first round if he's mm -hmm. fortunate. If he's fortunate. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take a break, come back, keep you going with uh, LSU and South Carolina, who tangled up in extra hands. Got another special event that occurred this weekend, and Charles and I will talk about that when we return after this pause on the Pelican Spring Sports Post Game Show on Pelican Sports TV and WUBR, CBS Sports Radio, Baton Rouge. Stay with us. Hello, my name is Debbie. Welcome to Debbie's Bridal of Formal Affair. My name is Raven. I work at Debbie's Bridal and she makes your dreams come true. Perkins Road Veterinary Hospital is a full-service veterinary hospital committed to your pet's health. We offer advanced diagnostic and therapeutic medical services, laser surgery, dog and cat diets, and treats along with stress-free boarding. Dr. Ritchie sees patients for routine checkups to keep your loved ones happy, also advanced medical and surgical cases. We have separate condos for cat boarding and large climate-controlled canine boarding. Our boarding dogs get to have fun in a very large play yard several times a day. Laser therapy is a service that we offer to heal wounds and help our patients that suffer from chronic pain. Laser therapy is a wonderful adjunct treatment for neurologic and arthritic pain with no side effects. Your pets are family members and deserve the best and highest quality of care. Dr. Ritchie and his staff greatly respect the human-animal bond and are committed to exceeding your expectations. Pelican Sports Spring Post Game Show. Charles Barbary in the house. Long time Sports Talk TV run on Sunday nights for what, 17, 18 years? A little more than 18. 18, 18, 18 years, and a half. Eight, 18 years, eight months. What do you miss most about it? Uh, not, uh, let's see, what do I miss most about it? The pizza. 
the bees. <laughs> hey, Charles, also this weekend out there with LSU baseball on a Saturday evening, uh, you know, uh, recognition of the 1997 College World Series champion, the years. only Tiger team to go back to back, to win it back to back, right. and it was the third of the six titles that they have. Some of your memories of that 1997 team, quite the, uh, they could hit a long ball. Uh, 188 home runs, 40 home runs by uh, Brandon Larson. That'll 118 be. RBIs he had. Whoa. Yeah, so sitting there. Uh, the, everybody in the lineup had at least 10 home runs. One. Hmm? Had at least one home run. Had at least 10 home runs. Every player had at least one, I'm sorry. No, yeah, every player, but everybody in the lineup. Oh, the starting the lineup all had, had 10? Had, had okay. 10 or more. Uh, uh, the one I remember beating Alabama in the championship game, yes. 13-6, uh, <laughs> to six, uh, jumped out. I think we scored like... Eight, eight or nine runs in the first inning. Danny Higgins had two home runs. <clears throat> and uh, 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 there's a great story that you can tell off the air about that, uh, about Danny Higgins and uh, what he had done the night before and uh, coming into the lineup, not expecting to play. But uh, did, did that and uh, it, was a, it was a great ball game. It was a great team. They, uh, uh, it was a different era, different style of ball, obviously. It's, it was the height of gorilla ball uh, and uh, uh, it was a fun, fun to watch. I mean, you you you, you averaged uh, what three home runs a game or whatever. Well, they, it was. They, they played seventy games, so you know, and and they uh, they won fifty seven of them, and in all seventy games they hit at least one bomb. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so it's not like <laughs> I mean, so obviously they get shut out, but you know, uh, but what a team, you know, and uh, I remember Doug Thompson throwing that glove up in the air. I don't think it came down yet, but uh, you know, it, it got a good it call on that off, outside pitch. Bug. Yeah, he did. He capped <laughs> off the year before Warren Morris hit the home run, as everybody knows, and then he got this game. And uh, well, they came without an eyelash at winning three in a row, uh, and the next year in '98 was the year that the wind changed. They beat they beat Southern California. In a, in a slug and a home run derby in the first game of the College World Series, and then after that, the winds started blowing in at, at Rosenblatt Stadium, and they beat uh, LSU, and uh, it was a double elimination at the time, uh, and that and uh, they beat LSU on a, a Thursday, and then came back and beat them again on a Friday, and uh, well, that's when the, the, you say the wind changed, but so did the temperature. I remember Blair Barbier and them telling me that you know it was June. They, they didn't have sweatshirts and windbreakers, and they had to go to the store and all buy some gear for the cold I was weather. In, I was in the home all one time when that happened. They got cold, cold, and I mean they weren't prepared for that. I mean, heck, you go to Omaha in June, you, you're not thinking cold weather. No, it, the, the wind the, the wind changed and the, the things changed one time. The temperature dropped 20 degrees. Wow. Uh, very easily, very easily up there. Uh, we got that. I, remember the, I think it was the first time I ever went to Omaha. That between sat, that Saturday night or Sunday morning, a big front came through, and thunderstorms, and a whole nine yards. And man, the weather changed just like that. So anyway, but, that, that, but that that 97 team was pretty good. 20 year anniversary that 97 team was really really special, and uh, and it was good to see all those guys come yeah. back in the box. I'm sure they swapped some old yeah, war stories. Again, they had Catholic High boys on that team: Ainsworth, uh, Demui, uh, uh, Garadell. I mean, hey, they, I'm sure they swapped some stories and had some fun, and, and I know the crowd appreciated seeing them. And I know they appreciated the crowd. I heard uh, part of a radio broadcast the other night when Brandon Larson was in the booth, and he talked about how, you know, the, the fans were the right. best and this, that, and the other. And that's the days of the old box when, uh, you know, we all thought that was the state-of-the-art thing. And I know you and we were all in left field many, many a time, eating and cooking and having fun. The best thing is if you watch the games last week in Alabama and Gabe... Uh, uh, Gro, G Gross, as he pronounced with the S. G Gabe Gross from Auburn was one doing the color comment, and he was commenting about how great it was. And I can remember uh, the, the, the banter that would go back and forth between some of the left field guys and him when he was playing left field and stuff, and teasing him about being the quarterback at Auburn who had lost across the street in Tiger Stadium and stuff. And he went back, and it was Great humor and great everything else, and after the end, of, after the third game, he gave a bat to some people and stuff. It was really fantastic. Well, I know the guys. Uh, many of them, you know, he's cook up. A, I mean, enough food to feed an army. Pardon the pun. And and they would certainly. After I can remember, after many a game, players and parents from the opposing team coming right. to eat whatever they had cooked. I can promise you, whatever they cooked was good. good. 
Donnie Chatelaine and his crew and many, many others, Knucklehead, they were all out there. And it, it was a ritual to be out there behind those left field bleachers. And, and I guarantee you, you couldn't find better food. You could find this good food, but you couldn't find better food anywhere around uh, back in those days. And the, uh, visiting teams, especially the teams from the SEC, and, and the they would look forward to it. They're like, okay, we got to go to Baton Rouge. Well, we're going to eat good. You yeah, know? And, the, and it was fun. When the, then the regional, you'd have teams from other parts of the country. I remember UCLA guys sitting out there and eating like for two hours one day. Yeah, that football player Williams, I forgot his, uh, he, was, he played professional football. He was a center fielder for him. And they, uh, the UCLA thing was is that UCLA had been on the road. They had played uh, a, a road game, a road series, like in Oregon or somewhere to end the season. And then they had went to Oklahoma and played in uh, a regional. And they didn't expect to win it, and they did. And then they came to Baton Rouge. They'd been on the road for like three weeks. They were ready to go home. They didn't want to be in Baton Rouge playing baseball. They wanted to go home. And that, the guy uh, from their center fielder was out there before the game <laughs> drinking a beer and eating with us. So. There you go. You're not supposed to tell that, Charlie. Like you, you can tell, <laughs> tell it now. now. It's 20 years time has gone by. The statute of limitations is over. It's up. All right. Hey, we're going to take another break. We'll have more of the Pelican Sports Spring Post Game Show. If you want to give us a call, 225-928-4910 is the number to call. I'd like to that's hear some the, opinions on baseball team. That's the same number you call for any of the local radio shows. And, of course, the text message is area code 504-689-9246. With Charles Barbary, I'm Tommy Chrysan. You're watching the Pelican Spring Sports Post Game Show on Pelican Sports TV, and you're listening on WUBR. Stay with us. Acord Eye Clinic Vision Source is located on Perkins Road in Baton Rouge, offering full-service optical and lab work. Dr. Shonda Acord and the professionally trained staff pride themselves on service, complete eye exams, help with contact lenses, and selection of frames featuring Silhouette, Gucci, Jimmy Choo, and all the top lines. State-of-the-art equipment including Optimap, which digitally photographs your retina. Call Acord Eye Clinic for an appointment. 225-767-3937. That's 225-767-3937. Visit the website, visionsource-br.com. All patients of all ages are welcome. Acord Eye Clinic, Vision Source. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-383-8177. 800-383-8177. DLA Painting Incorporated is your company for professional painting. Serving the greater Baton Rouge area and South Louisiana for over 20 years. Ready to paint for those recovering from flood. Residential repaint. Commercial painting. Any size job. Free estimates. Customer satisfaction is a highest priority. Call 225-505-8785. DLA Painting Incorporated. Fully insured. Call Dennis at DLA Painting at 225-505-8785. Dr. Farrell Frugier Jr. and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 
I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Pelicans Sports uh, Post Game Show uh, production uh, purposes. Uh, LSU, South Carolina still tangling. We'll keep you posted. We'll also tell you about WUBR, CBS Sports Radio in Baton Rouge, the Uber home of the Jim Radio. Rome show. A great mixture of local and national stuff. Uh, the weekdays finds Jordy Hulberg talking baseball with Coach Roger Cato. Our Jaguars season is over. I think there'll be another week or two of that. We'll keep you posted. It will be there uh, on Monday this week at 12 noon with a replay at 5 p.m. Buddy Sanji with Buddy Sports Talk from 1 to 3. I'm there from 3 to 5. Friday afternoons, Dave Scandaliato at Sportsline. Carlos Brown on Saturday mornings. Through the night, we give you a Louisiana Music Hall of Fame radio and select Houston Astros ball games on the air for you. And get our app, WUBR AM 910. CBS Sports Radio, we're not leaving tune in, but we want you to get our app. It'll help you take us with you 24-7, wherever you might be going. Keep up with all the local guys and, of course, all the national stuff from CBS Sports Radio. I, Charles, I need uh, to get that schedule for the Astros, by the way. Okay, sure. uh, we'll do that. I know you're a big Astros fan. Uh, Charles, <coughs> uh, LSU and South Carolina are still tangling. Quickly, your thoughts on the NFL draft. Three Tigers go in the first round. Leonard Fournette. Fourth pick to Jacksonville. Jamal Adams, sixth pick to the New York Jets. Tredavious White jumps into the first round and the 27th pick to the Buffalo Bills. Your thoughts on those three guys and their NFL careers? Congratulations to them, first of all. It's the first time LSU's had three guys in the first round, I think, in like 50 or 60 years or something like that. And uh, you have to, give, uh, you have to uh, go out and you've got to give Les Miles credit for recruiting. It shows that LSU has talent and they've had talent. Uh, and they've been able to uh, produce a lot of guys. And if you look at two, out, two guys out of the secondary first round, uh, and I think, I mean, LSU is DBU, there's no question about that. And then you have Fournette. I'm going to be very interested. What do you expect Fournette's uh, career to be like? Well, I read a stat, Charles, that 70% of his carries in his career at LSU had seven, eight, or more guys in the box defensively. That's not going to happen in the NFL, okay? They're not going to be doing that. Now, the linebackers are a little better in the NFL. A little faster. Yeah. Uh, so I think if used correctly, you know, with a wide open offense, and then they're not going to give it to him 25 times right. or more. You know, he's going to be asked to carry the ball 12, 14, 15 times, maybe catch a pass or two out of the backfield. And I think he has a chance to be successful. You know, everybody points to Ezekiel, Ezekiel Elliott in the year he had with the Cowboys. Cowboys. Well, that's the best offensive line in the NFL. You, you and I could have got a couple of yards behind that line. Not a lot, but a couple. So in Jacksonville, line them is the reason they were picking fourth. That's not a, you know, they're not as good as some other NFL teams. But I think Fournette's got that size. He's got that speed. Uh, we saw flashes of brilliance in his career at LSU. And, you know, the, the injury bothered him his whole junior year. So be it. Uh, we'll see how he progresses. I'm really 50-50 to answer your question. Uh, if I he, think he's going to have a good career. I think he's going to have a good career. Was it going to be a great career? Uh, that's where my 50-50 is. Yeah, I, uh, but I, I think I'm not going to be surprised if he tears it up. Maybe he's rookie of the uh, year. Maybe he goes to a couple Pro Bowls. Or if he just becomes a back that bounces around from team to team and gets 400 yards a year, I'll be like, well, I kind of <clears> saw that coming too. Look at Reggie Bush. And I, I kind of look at the same type of thing. I mean, he was, he was so highly... Uh, thought of coming out of college and he had a good career but it wasn't the kind of career that people really expected so uh, I think he will have a good career at least and then whether it's a great career that's where my 50-50 is. 
All right, and then, of course, I think Jamal Adams plays at a high level for a long time yeah, on yeah, Sundays. Yeah, he's gonna be I mean, this guy's going to he's gonna roam the secondary for the Jets, and he, he's going to be tough. I think Travavius White's going to have a good career in Buffalo. Yeah, Travavius White, I mean, you know, I think those two – I think those two guys, it'll, I'll be less surprised that they have a very good career than I will at Fournette. Let me ask you, we hadn't touched on it, but uh, Adrian Peterson coming with the Saints. Good deal, bad deal? Uh, I, don't, I think it's always good if you can add a Hall of Famer to your roster. You already got Drew Brees, who's a Hall of Famer. You know, Mark Ingram appears to be welcoming this idea. But here's the thing you got to know. Uh, Peterson never carried the ball less than 238 times a year, but the Vikings uh, went healthy. Okay, obviously last year we was banged up. The high, most carries Ingram's ever had in the year is 205. So something's got to give here. I mean, you know, but I think anytime you can put a player of that caliber, maybe it lengthens Ingram's career a few less knocks to the head and pounds right. on the shoulder and the thigh. So, uh, again, I think you, you get a guy like that, it makes a difference uh, on your team. Yeah, I know they need defense, but you can't, you know, focus so much that on defense that you end up with a gap on offense. Yeah, I thought it was a good deal. I thought that especially they were able to get him at a reasonable price. That's, that's <laughs> not, the other thing. It's, hey, it's not going to break the bank. Yeah, the reward outweighs the risk. Yeah. yeah, yeah and I that's thought, a good point and, on the and price. I thought, and I thought that was a good deal. I'm looking forward to watching that offense and see what uh, – uh, uh, Peyton comes up with to utilize his talents. And how about the fact that the Saints opened the season on Monday night against the Vikings? Did they? Or did they? <laughs> They're opening games Monday night football at Minnesota. So, I'll be interested to see Hopper what Hopper hinted that the NFL knew that they, he was going to sign with the so, so Saints because the schedule came out right. before this happened. But I mean, come on. Yeah, my question is what kind of reception will he get in uh, Minnesota? Be interesting to see. Remains to be seen. Hey, we're going to take our final break of this week's edition of the Pelican Sports Spring Post Game Show. Don't go anywhere. Phone lines, text messages still open if you want to mix it up with us. Don't forget Pelican Sports TV with so much hunting, fishing, and outdoors programming. That's what they put their footprint in the sand some 15 years ago with. So all your outdoors years? stuff, your hunting, your fishing, and of course the local sports stuff. Uh, we appreciate you checking it out. Tigers Roar on Wednesday nights and you know, lots of other good stuff, too. Check us out at PelicanSportsTV.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. The Facebook page is Pelican Broadcasting. Twitter account is at Pelican Sports. Final break of this week's program. Next week, we air at 3 o'clock on Saturday or maybe a few minutes after. We'll be right back. Put a wrap on it. Charles Barbie, Tommy Chrysan, stay with us. Perkins Road Veterinary Hospital is a full-service veterinary hospital committed to your pet's health. We offer advanced diagnostic and therapeutic medical services, laser surgery, dog and cat diets, and treats along with stress-free boarding. Dr. Ritchie sees patients for routine checkups to keep your loved ones happy, also advanced medical and surgical cases. We have separate condos for cat boarding and large climate-controlled canine boarding. Our boarding dogs get to have fun in a very large play yard several times a day. Laser therapy is a service that we offer to heal wounds and help our patients that suffer from chronic pain. Laser therapy is a wonderful adjunct treatment for neurologic and arthritic pain with no side effects. Your pets are family members and deserve the best and highest quality of care. Dr. Ritchie and his staff greatly respect the human-animal bond and are committed to exceeding your expectations. Plus Benefits has an important message for all uninsured Americans. It's official. 
Health reform has now become law. Now, uninsured Americans can finally get the health coverage they need with significant prescription benefits. Have you been uninsured, denied coverage, or struggling to pay your health insurance? Well, not anymore. Now there's affordable options with real benefits for people just like you. We know health insurance cost and being denied coverage due to pre-existing conditions has created serious hardships for many Americans. But that's a thing of the past. If you're uninsured, struggling to afford, or have been denied health insurance, pick up the phone and call now. The call is free, and every caller will receive a free discount prescription savings card. Call Plus Benefits Health Insurance Helpline today and get the health insurance and prescription coverage you need. One call can change your life for the better. Please call 800-351-1511. That is 800-351-1511. Hello, my name is Debbie. Welcome to Debbie's Bridal of Formal Affair. I work at Debbie's Bridal and she makes your dreams come true. Alright, uh, final segment of this week's edition of the Pelican Sports Post Game Show. Don't forget, next week the SEC series with Auburn is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, as is Mississippi State, but next week's in Baton Rouge. Saturday game, first pitch set for 12 noon. That puts the show on at about 3 or 3.15, unless they go a bunch of extra yeah. innings. We've kind of got, got, to happen kind of got our production <laughs> schedule a little bit today. We appreciate your patience and understanding on that. Uh, but uh, there is a non-conference game Tuesday night against South Alabama. Mm -hmm. Exams are over with. The guys can go baseball, baseball, baseball now. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it gets down to the crunch time of the season. If LSU can uh, pull this game out uh, Sunday, and as we talked about, if you split the last six, you wind up uh, with 18 wins, and then see what you do in the SEC tournament, where you go from there. Right now, LSU's trying to get a regional. Uh, I, I don't, unless they just catch fire for some reason, which I haven't seen a, uh, any signs of yet, they won't get a super. Well, and the other thing on getting a regional nowadays is, you know, for two decades ago, the same bunch of teams got regionals. Now it depends on what, are, you know, what are Louisville doing? What's Oregon State doing? What's, what's teams around the country doing? More and more teams bid than used to bid. And, you know, and they, the NCAA did try to get a little more diverse and putting some in the north and in the Midwest when for years they seemed like they were in that oh. southern belt and that west coast of the map. But now they 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 moving that thing around, so the work it's tougher for LSU to get a regional now. Oh, no question about that. But I, I'm really glad because I know uh, Skip used to talk about back in the nineties how baseball was a regional sport in college and wanted to make it a national sport. And it's gone. For, it's, it's not a completely national sport, but it's not a regional sport either. You look at the Louisville, for example. You got Louisville and the University of Kentucky in the Commonwealth of Kentucky right now. You got Oregon State, number one in the country, up in Oregon. Uh, you got the, the ACC, the SEC. The Big 12, the uh, Pac-12, the, the big conferences are playing ball. And then you have last year, who won the national title? Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina, so, you know, so, so. Fresno and Oregon State had their run. Long Beach State. A friend States. of mine, Umps, in the Pac-12 said, everybody that throws for Oregon State throws 95. He thought the little thing on the scoreboard a dozen miles probably thought mm -hmm. it was broke on 95 one <laughs> game when he was umping. He said, because everybody they brought in just they threw said, 95. <clears throat> they said that Oregon State's team ERA is under yeah. two. Well, if they all throw 95, I could I could see how that goes. Yeah. Charles, really been great to have you appreciate in here you visiting me. with us, and uh, appreciate that very much. Uh, it's good to have you on TV. We might have to do it again real soon. I'm happy to do it, and I'm uh, glad to let people know I'm still alive and kicking. Charles ain't, ain't completely is, is done doing yet. great. Still got his LSU. Oh, you got, you got Rooster written on his shirt sure, right there for right. you. That was a gift from some friends of mine. There you go. That. That's a good thing right there. So anyway, uh, again, one, one more time we point out the production schedule's got us a little bit. The extra innings uh, over at the box. So uh, uh, we appreciate your patience and understanding that. Uh, don't forget all the local uh, TV shows, the hunting, the fishing, the outdoor programming. Don't forget WUBR, CBS Sports Radio. Facebook is Pelican Broadcasting. Twitter is at Pelican Sports. On behalf of everyone involved with Pelican Broadcasting, my co-host today, Charles Barbary. My name's Tommy Chrysan. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We'll speak again soon.